This is a Wall & Sack reel-to-reel tape recorder from 1959. I found it on the street while I was out for a walk with my mother. Somebody was just throwing it out. It's massively heavy, and when we found it, it didn't have any reels or a power cord, so I ordered both. And they're here, so let's try it out. Oof. I don't know if you could see that, but when I plugged it in and turned it on, a cloud of dust just came out of the front where the speaker is. So first things first, I'm going to plug the output into my computer so we can actually hear stuff, and I'm going to plug in the microphone it came with. By the way, these Wallensack microphones were actually made by the Shure Corporation, so it should be pretty decent. The person I ordered the blank reels from also very kindly included some tape, even though I didn't order that. The box says that it has Ukrainian folk songs on it, but I checked it out and it seems to be blank, so I'm going to use the tape for my experiments. I've got this ukulele sitting around, so might as well record that. Okay, let's hear how that sounded. Sounds pretty nice. A lot less noisy than I expected. So this thing actually has two speeds, seven and a half inches per second, or three and a quarter. We just recorded at seven and a half, but let's hear that at half speed. Nice. I love that warbly tape sound. It's warm, but it's also a little bit melancholic. I'm gonna have to make a sample library out of this sound, it's too cool. It's funny, I've been doing a lot of videos about tape-related technology lately, and I've actually been looking for a reel-to-reel -reel that I could use for my experiments for a while. Finding this one on the street kind of feels like kismet. While I was waiting for the power cord to arrive, I did a ton of research on this thing. Wallensack was an American company based in Chicago. In the late 50s, it was bought by the 3M Corporation so that 3M could become a company that both produced audio tape and the machines that used it. By the way, if you're wondering what 3M stands for, it's Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company. This particular model, the T1515, was a staple in schools and institutions across America because it offered decent sound quality and was very reliable. Here's another funny thing I learned. So you see how it says stereo? What is meant by that is that it can play back commercially available stereo tapes. Unfortunately, recording is in mono. Or is it? You see this wheel here? If you turn it, it moves the record head, and there are three positions, A, B, and two track. Basically, you can record two mono tracks completely independently of each other. You can even listen back to the B track while the A track is playing. Unfortunately, the opposite of that is not possible, which means it's not so useful for multi-track recording. Now that we know that it works, let's make ourselves a tape loop. The process for doing this is dead simple. Basically, you measure out a length of tape, cut it with scissors or an X-Acto, form it into a loop, and then get yourself some adhesive tape, tape the backside, and you're good to go. You've got a loop. People who do this regularly should invest in a tape splicing kit and use real splicing tape, but for our purposes, this is perfect. If you make a short loop, it will fit neatly on your reels and both reels will spin, like this. But you may find that that's not enough recording time. The loop I made is a bit longer, so I'm just going to loop it around this metal stand that I had lying around. I've got Ableton Live up on the computer, and I'm going to digitally record what's coming out of the tape recorder. So the length of the tape loop I just made is going to determine the duration of the loop and consequently the tempo I need to be working at. Since I cut my tape without measuring it at all, I need to figure out what the right tempo is. I made this loop out of just like a random scrap of tape that was in my tape box. So first I'm just going to check to make sure there isn't anything on it. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what that is. That is pretty surprising. 
It's actually super helpful to us though, because we can see that it's looping, because obviously we made a tape loop, and we can figure out the BPM of that loop really easily. I'm just gonna drag the selectors around and make a little loop in Ableton, and lo and behold, we can see right here, it says that the BPM is 77. So we know every loop we're gonna make from here on out is gonna be in 77 BPM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on the metronome here, and I'm just gonna hit play. And now I'm just gonna record something on the wall and sack. Okay, I think that's enough. Now I'm gonna hit record on the computer and I'm gonna play the tape loop that we just made. And now I'm going to figure out the loop points. I guess we'll just say that this is one one. Seems like it's perfectly in rhythm. I like that glitch at the end of the loop. You can see it happens here and it happens over here. Okay, let's make a new track and repeat this process. Okay. Time to find out what the tape recorder picked up. If I play the original loop that we did and the new loop, it's gonna sound terrible because they're both in exactly the same range. So our goal here is to lower this by an octave. Obviously, we could just do that in Ableton like this. And it sounds cool in Ableton, of course, but let's try to do that using the wall and sack. And here's what that sounds like with the original loop. Not bad. Let's add another track. So part of the warmth of the sound of the wall and sack comes from its tube preamp. Internally, it's a lot like a classic guitar amplifier. In fact, a number of people have found these old tape machines, taken out the fan, and turned them into guitar amplifiers. Let's try using it that way now. I'm going to take my Jazz Master and I'm going to plug it directly into the microphone input. So this is a funny thing about the microphone input on this thing. You see how the mic that came with it has this strange short plug? It's about two-thirds length of a normal plug. Well, there's a reason for that. This thing has a built-in microphone preamp. And when you plug a short plug into this thing, it knows to expect a lower volume signal and it engages the microphone preamp to boost the signal. If you plug a standard, longer plug in, it expects a higher volume signal and it bypasses that preamp. So for plugging a guitar in, we have two options. We can plug the cable all the way in and get a nice clean sound. Or we can pull the plug halfway out which will route us through that mic preamp, and we get a ton of distortion. I'm gonna go with the clean sound for now. Here's what that sounds like if we double it an octave lower. And now with drums added. And just like that, we've got ourselves a little piece of music. I'm really enjoying this process. In a sense, I'm using a tape machine as an intermediary within a larger digital recording session. It's adding a layer of texture and unpredictability to the sound. One interesting thing about working this way, recording over and over again using the same old tape loop, is that each time you record over that stretch of tape, the recording quality gets worse. So the tracks you add at the end sound even more garbled than the ones you started with. Overall, I'm finding these wall and sack recorders to be pretty magical. Not only are they dirt cheap, very easy to find, and seemingly indestructible, but you can actually use them as tube guitar amps, which is quite the added bonus. Of course, there are downsides too. The fan is super noisy, they weigh a ton, and yeah, they can't record in stereo. Here's an ad for this model from 1960. 
It brags about what it calls third dimensional sound and says that it weighs a scant 20 pounds. Not sure I would call 20 pounds scant, but I guess everything is relative. When these were first released, they were marketed as luxury consumer items. In 1960, these sold for $230, which in today's money is over $2,000, so not cheap. Still, I can only imagine how exciting it must have been to have something that sounded this good in one's home. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time. I've got a bunch of exciting videos on the way. The sample library I made in this video is called Lo-Fi Ukulele. And it's available to patrons. The Patreon costs $5 and every month you'll get an exclusive sample library. There have been a ton already and you can download the whole back catalog if you become a patron. Okay, I think that's it. See you soon.